Barbara Pickauer <coughs> is the uh, president of the JPB Foundation. Uh, for the purposes of the roundtable, and especially for you here today, you need know that she and the foundation have been with us and with this roundtable, and she a member of this roundtable from the beginning. We're pleased to have Barbara Pickauer with us today. Thank you. Um, I don't generally talk publicly, and it never fails yeah, that the two times that I've been in Washington, Okay, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. So the, the two times that I've recently spoken in Washington, which is rare, I was ushered off of the stage because somebody from the White House, somebody from the government <laughs> was coming in. And so I feel right at home here because as soon as I was told, as soon as the secretary comes, we're off. Um, but one of the things when I was talking to Bill uh, last week was he was questioning or he wanted us to talk a little bit about funders fatigue. And I want to say that my foundation will always be in uh, the field of obesity. Um, and it stems back from a personal note of mine when I was in elementary school and I was the shortest and fattest person in my class. And the shame that I felt as a little seven or eight year old walking first in the classroom trying to hide my GERD, you know, um, was amazing. And it's never left me. And I went on and I have a degree in nutrition. And fortunately for everybody, I never practiced it. But <laughs> I, I really am concerned about um, obesity. And I'm particularly uh, um, concerned about obesity in young people and as they grow up. Now, my foundation is a little bit different from a lot of the other foundations out there because I think that poverty is our biggest problem in the United States. And I'm always amazed that people find nice ways to talk about poverty. They call it uh, inequality, uh, lack of social mobility, but when push comes to shove, it's that people are living really, really poorly. They don't have enough money to feed themselves, and when they do feed themselves the food that is generally available to people that are making $2 a day uh, with a family of four, and um, is, is fattening food, it's chips, it's snacks, it's, it's potatoes, it's nothing that's really good for them. And because of that, I feel that people across the United States get bigger and bigger and bigger, having less and less and less money. And so what we try to do at our foundation is to look for barriers to um, poverty. How do you, what is it that's out there that's stopping people from being able to live over here on $2 a day to live over here as a working class family? Um, and so we've come up with a whole laundry list of different things. And one of them is what we're calling health inequalities. And I'm going against myself by saying we don't talk about poverty enough, but saying health poverty doesn't really sound as good as inequalities in health. In any event, we feel that obesity is one such barrier to poverty. And if we can get younger people to grow up at normal weight, then they will have a chance of crossing that street and having a more successful life. Young kids that are overweight don't participate in exercise for whatever reason. They don't participate in school the way a normal weighted child does. And we're looking for ways to, um, to, to help them. 
So one of the things that we've been funding that uh, I, I'm really proud of is at the Harlem Children's Zone. I think most of you have heard of the Harlem Children's Zone. Um, we started a project with them that we are the funder of, and it's called Healthy Harlem. And it is, we, we just got back the first conclusive results of our um, five-year evaluation, and we're in the third year, and the results are really promising, significantly, um, statistically significant. Uh, and it's a problem, it's a program that um, embraces all aspects of a child to college age goes through. So there's a nutrition component, there's a sports program that includes teaching young kids, six and seven year olds, how to play golf. Uh, there's a program it, it physically to climb walls. There's, you know, every kind of um, sports program that you could think to think of these 1,200 students partake in. There's a cooking component where the older kids go in and they cook and they have festivals and they write cookbooks. There's a program for the mothers where uh, Weight Watchers has become available to some of the mothers so that the mothers and the fathers that partake in this can come back and really help their kids because they know a little bit about nutrition. Um, there's a dietary program. In, in any event, we're really, really proud of that. And one of the other things that our foundation um, has done that we are proud of is uh, we were the funders of the Y um, DPP program at the Y to scale. And I do have to say, I don't think the obesity problem is going to go away. And I think even if every Y was offering the program, it's not enough. We have to get other organizations that can come in and teach the program. There's no magic formula about the YDPP. Uh, any good program can do it. And we're also trying to bring it down to a child's level, which is a little bit more difficult than a pre-diabetics pr uh, program. But I, I think there's so much work that has to be done, and I'm going to conclude by saying that all of these experiences has led us at the JPB to feel that uh, diabetes, I'm, I'm sorry, obesity is always going to be around. It's not going to be around fairly. Um, but we all need to continue to work and not fatigue out. And then the last thing I'd like to say is I agree with all of you who had been talking about um, the diversity issue in, um, in, in obesity and other areas. And I think one of the problems that we have is that when we go into a site and we say, we're going to cure obesity or we're going to provide a really good treatment for obesity, and it's going to be in this particular neighborhood. It's usually a neighborhood that is of color. And we then have to rethink how we think about children of color and Caucasians and every nationality, how we embrace um, treating, uh, treating obesity. And the way that I think it is, is you can't say it's a black problem or a blue problem or a green problem. What you have to say is this is an American problem and that all Americans need to come together whether or not they are of um, any political persuasion, we have to work together to solve the problem of diabetes. Thank you. David Fukuzawa. Thank you, Barbara.